So I just published an article on developer.force.com on how to authorize external Java applications access to your Salesforce data using OAuth. That's great if you want to write, let's say, something using Spring or Google App Engine and you want to access some of your app application data in Salesforce and use that externally. So one of my Salesforce buddies called me the other day and said, well, what if I want to do the opposite? What if I have a force.com application and I want to use some of my Google contacts in there or my blogger information or something from, let's say, LinkedIn or TripIt? So luckily, Jesper Jorgensen at Salesforce wrote the uh, Salesforce OAuth Playground. And this is a great project that shows you how to um, sign um, requests for external data using OAuth. Now, he's got a whole little, little toolkit here that you can install and run, and, and it works fairly well, but if you want to dig into the actual meat or the source of the, of the uh, implementation, you've got to download the source files yourself. And that's what I had to do to kind of dig through some of the errors I was getting um, using OAuth with some of the Google um, services. So we're going to walk through it real quick on how to actually install it, set it up, and run through some examples. I found a few um, issues that I worked around. It took me a couple days to do that, so I thought maybe someone might benefit from my experience here. So first thing you can do is you can install the managed package, and it works like any other managed package. You can install it in the sandbox. So I have that right here. So let's see. Here's uh, what it looks like. You get an application called the OAuth Consumer Playground, and it has three tabs. And what this is, you want to go ahead and register your services first, and then you're going to authorize these services, and then you're going to test these services. So what you do is you go in here and you create a new service. I'm just going to edit this one myself here. So you just basically give it the name of the service. You give it the request token URL, the access token URL, and then the authorization URL. Now for, for Google, these are all the same. And if you look at this OAuth API reference down here, they give you all of these, these URLs. And they're the same for all services on Google. So you can you use that. Uh, since we're not using a registered service, you can use an anonymous consumer key, an anonymous secret. Now, what, the thing that really tripped me up for many hours is, in, in uh, Google, you have to specify the scope, which is basically the service you're connecting to. I'm connecting with Blogger. And I was actually just putting the URL in here for, the, for Blogger. But what took me hours and hours to figure out the bug is that I thought it was a bug, but it was actually just an implementation was that you have to encode this URL for it to work correctly. So one thing great about Google is they have their own OAuth playground that you can come here and you can test out this whole OAuth process and you can see the requests that go on. So I can come through here and say, I want to connect to Blogger and it gives you the, the, the um, scope. So here's the scope that you're going to use in your anonymous um, consumer key and your anonymous secret. And then you can go ahead and request this token and it's going to give you the actual signature that you're going to be using and the authorization headers and the request, the response that comes back from the request. So that's really nice with Google, how you can test out and make sure that everything's coming across correctly and being returned correctly. So once you've got that installed, you need to do one more thing. You need to go through here and set up um, a remote site for Google. So I went over here and uh, security, and you have to create a remote site. So you have to set up Google for that also. So I did, did that. And so once you have that done, you've got the OAuth set up, you've got your remote site set up, you want to add some URLs. And these are the URLs you're going to use to test with. So for Blogger, they have a good set of instructions on, uh, on this page right here. And it gives you a little information on how to use Blogger for, for um, Google Data APIs. So I went ahead and used that first. So what I did was <clears throat> I set up my different URLs for, for my posts and for my content, or my comments, I'm sorry. And what this is, this is actually the ID of my blog. And this is the ID of the blog, and then this is the, a specific post. And I'm going to get all the comments for that post. So now I've got my account set up, my OAuth service set up, and I've got my URLs. And one thing I'm missing now are my tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize Salesforce to use Google, and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, request that as those tokens. And we'll come back to this, and you'll see that these are populated. So I'm going to go over here to the authorization tab. And it's fairly simple here. You just select the service. You hit authorize. 
And if everything's okay, it's going to send you over to Google. And I'm going to enter my credentials and sign in. And it's going to show me the service and the site. And it's going to ask me if I want to grant access or deny access. So I'm going to go ahead and grant the access. And that's going to bring me back to Salesforce. And it's going to tell me the authorization was successful. Now if I look back at my service, you can see now that I have a token in here. And it's an access token with my secret and my return token also right here. So you've got the access secret and access token right here for my user. So for each user who authorizes this service, you'll have another record here for this token. And you want to treat these as passwords because the, they're very sensitive. So now that I have my tokens, I can come here and test my API. So I'll choose my service again, and I'll choose first uh, get the posts. And it'll populate this down here, and it'll so get. And I'll send this request. And you'll see it brings back the XML package. And you'll see I have three results. And here are some of my posts on here. And now I'll change this to the comments. And I'll send that. And then here are some of my comments. So that's a quick intro on how to use uh, the OAuth Playground for Salesforce. If you've got any questions, drop me a line or you can add them to the project for the uh, OAuth Playground for Salesforce.